Welcome everyone, welcome. A warm welcome, a very, very warm welcome to the Growth Masters International, District 30, Northwest Division, Area 1, Humorous and Evaluating Student Speech Contest. The first thing that I'm going to do before I forget is to reach to my pocket, grab my cell phone, and turn it to a very off position. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, ask everyone to do the same thing. Put your weapons of mass distraction in the silent mode. And another thing before I introduce our Toastmaster this evening is to recognize a few folks who have joined us this evening. First of all, I'd like to welcome Michaeline Zawatsky, former district governor. And with us this evening, too, is our division governor, John Labby. Our area three governor, Leah Geocaris. Leah, I'm Leah. Governor Iqbal Acha. There we are. And our very high governor, Christina Parha. And, oh, I have a former area. I've met a lot of former area governors here, I believe. So, I will move on, introduce our toast master for the evening. Please help me welcome our toast master for the event. Humorous Evaluation Contest, Jim Cudney. Thank you, Dean, and welcome, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Thank you so much for coming out tonight for this contest. It's always a lot of fun, particularly the Humorous Speech Contest. I see that the weather has cooperated with us in terms of it being a fall speech contest. I know I enjoy that weather uh, quite a bit. Of course, it's still summer, and I'm not going to be cheated out of the last few days of summer. Uh, the autumn equinox is on Saturday morning at 9.45, so it's summer for me until then. In case you were wondering, it's also on Saturday, 91 shopping days left until the end of the world. <laughs> So make sure you get out there and uh, get what you need. Thank you very much. I've been given a script in case anybody's worried about uh, how the evening is going to go, and I have been told to stick to that script. So I had to uh, get rid of the empty chair interview with Srini Voss, uh, uh, and everything I think will be fine. We have two contests tonight the speech evaluation contest, and the humorous speech contest. The first contest will be the speech evaluation contest. When that contest has concluded, we will have a 10 minute break. And after that, we will continue with the humorous speech contest. Contestants, timers, Ballot counters and sergeant of arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern the contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. If time permits, during the one minute of silence between the presentations, you can leave the room if necessary. With that said, let the contest begin. First, I will give the speaking order for the speech evaluation contest at this time. There will be four contestants this evening. Contestant number one, John Pagel. Contestant number two, Martina Matizan. Contestant number three, Michelle Alk. Contestant number four, Linda Hennigenberg. 
In order for our evaluation contest contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them, obviously, that they can. Are you expecting us to just write um, the judges and functionaries to write just the first names of the contestants? Because if not, you need to spell the last names. I can spell the last names. That's not a problem. Contestant number one, John Pakel. I'm sorry, I didn't know they were on the left. Ah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, obviously, I was not aware of that either. Uh, otherwise, I would have pointed out to you that the names are on the left, that you can let them take those. No problem. And now for our uh, target speaker, please help me welcome to the lectern Amy Atcha. The title of her speech the best insurance ever. Amy Atcha. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, insurance. Insurance is a form of risk management, something that we need when an accident happens, perhaps when a tragic accident happens, or maybe even when we just need a little bit of help. So we're all familiar with the, with the most common types of insurance and probably have them all. Medical, life, auto, and homeowners. But what is really the most important insurance? There's one other one that I like to think of. The best insurance ever that will help you financially, emotionally, and psychologically. The best insurance ever is a power of attorney. A power of attorney for yourself, for health care, as well as a power of attorney for your assets and your financial care. As a national certified guardian, I can speak to the benefits of being a power of attorney instead of having to go down the route of having a legal guardian be appointed, especially from a financial perspective. When a legal guardian has to be appointed, there's a lot of additional court costs, hiring attorneys, a lot of court time and a lot of energy that goes into protecting yourself, protecting your assets, protecting those healthcare decisions. With the power of attorney, you can bypass a lot of these costs. So from a financial perspective, you're much better off getting that power of attorney and having it put in place well ahead of time just to protect you from those initial costs, of setting things up, of keeping things moving, of getting things going while you're in that, that very unstable, perhaps tragic situation. Now from an emotional standpoint, a power of attorney is also very helpful. As you know, if there's an accident, whatever kind of accident it is, you're usually in shock. You usually don't know what's going to happen, oh my gosh, what's going on, whether it's yourself or one of your loved ones that this is happening to. There's the first the disbelief, then there's the fear, then there's the sadness and the grief that are all involved. Now, a power of attorney will not take those feelings away from you and should not take those feelings away from you. Instead, that power of attorney will let you have those feelings. It'll let someone else take care of the burdens of everyday life so that you can feel those true emotions that are going through you and really be there in that situation so that you can be with your family, be with your loved ones, or just simply be and <coughs> let it all soak in. As you sit and think, well, gosh, as when a tragedy happens, life doesn't just stop. As we think of it, life does. The world, it seems that when you're sitting there, the, life, the world just stands still and everything is still going around, and you're just overwhelmed by it, a power of attorney can step in and help you out in those circumstances. Psychologically, a power of attorney is a great peace of mind. It's somebody who's there in the background holding you, holding, holding care of your assets, holding care of your health care decisions, so you don't need to, especially in those tragic times when something does happen. It's already put in place. So you might wonder, why is this so important to me, and why do I feel such a need to have a power of attorney? Because of my, my, my history, my background, at the age of 42, my brother uh, suffered a heart attack 
and he lost oxygen to his brain. He didn't recover, as some people hopefully do. Instead, he ended up in a situation where he would have benefited from a power of attorney, but he didn't have one. So as we were all gathered together in his hospital room, and mom and dad were there, and my brothers were there via phone, because we are literally scattered all over the globe, you're sitting there in, in such an emotional shock that this, this man, who is a vibrant 40-year-old, at, at just a few days before is now laying there, as you can imagine, in the hospital room with tubes and, and ties going everywhere, not, not, with not a thing you can do to help him out. And yet, all the while, the outside world is still going around. It's still there. The bills still have to be paid. The mail still has to be picked up. And those nurses and doctors, they don't help much either because they're in there badgering you with questions and decisions and what do you want to do and what about feeding tubes and what about life support and what about this and what about that? And, and you're just sitting there not knowing what to do. And had we known at the time what a power of attorney was and what a power of attorney could do for us, we would have been so blessed. So I've taken it upon myself since then to really get into knowing about a power of attorney, getting my certification to be a certified legal guardian for disabled adults, for people who are aging, so that they can say, Amy, can you come help me out? Can you stand by my side and be my peace of mind in the back of my room, waiting there, just sitting on the side, so that just in case I need you, you'll be there. And we can agree to whatever we want to agree to of how much authority I have, but we'd have that arrangement going. Have it before you need it. Prepare before you have to be in that situation. Get the best insurance ever, a power of attorney. Thank you. We will now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, will you please escort the contestants out of the room and time five minutes from the beginning when they are seated in the room. When that five minutes is over, please escort our first contestant back into this room. Now ask the timer to uh, time five minutes, please, for us in this room as well. Thank you. While the evaluation contestants complete their evaluations, we will get back now to our target speaker, Amy Acha. And I'd like to please help me welcome Amy back up to the mic. What, uh, what club are you with? I am with Masters of Opportunity in Schomburg at the Schomburg Library. And when does that mean? On the, first, the second and fourth Thursdays. Sorry. Great. So someone else in the room. Yes. Is, we're related, obviously. Uh, and how long have you been at Toastmasters? Um, I've actually been part of the club for about five years, okay. but I kind of go for a while and then get busy with life, and then go for a while and then get busy with life. So it's taking me a little while to get all my speeches done. Understand. Toastmaster on hold. We're all yes. uh, familiar with that uh, that mode, but uh, that's one of the beauties of Toastmasters, of course, is that we can all uh, progress at our own pace. Uh, I'm going to pull out uh, your biographical information here that we were working on just prior to uh, start here. It says here you've. Uh, <laughs> You have written two books. I've written two correct? books. Wow. Yes. Um, the first book is a book called Me, 
and it's actually a book that you write about you with help from me. And so it's called Me because you write it about yourself. And then you leave it on the shelf, and that way it really is a book that, that would help somebody who does need to step into your shoes as a power of attorney or as a legal guardian to know what your life is all about. So you put, you put in all kinds of information about your, who your friends and family are, but also who your doctors are, whether or not you have a will, whether or not you have a safe deposit box. And then of course all those end of life decisions that you may or may not feel comfortable communicating with the rest of your family. So it's easier to put it into a book. Then you can just tell your family you have this book. Well that makes a lot of sense. We're all, of course, familiar with recording all of the items in our house in case it uh, burns down, which happened to me once. And I hadn't recorded any of the items. <laughs> I was also we very uh, free yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the same time. <laughs> um, so it, it says here your interests include reading, writing, speaking, uh, and obviously the speaking uh, portion. What's, uh, what are you reading these days? Um, my, um, my favorite books really are James Patterson type of books, the murder mysteries. Although, you know, you have to keep up with what's going on, so there's been 50 shades of color. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep up with all different that, books. you know, yeah. different books. So, yeah, but some, lots of different things. That's great. I uh, actually joined a neighborhood book club a couple of years Did ago. Did they read 50 Shades? My... <laughs> no, we have not read that one. <laughs> I'm not sure that won't be coming up anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> my neighborhood group, but uh, that's, that's great. Uh, and uh, where... Whereabouts is your home? In Hanover Park. Okay. So I had a bit of a drive here this morning, but Great. or this evening. But actually, on the on the way here, it was nice. I also love to go bicycling, and so on the weekends, my husband and I would jump on the bike and, and bike like the whole day on Sunday. So as we were driving up here, we were noticing all the paths. And there's Prairie Trail that's not too far. Looks gorgeous. So we'll have to add that there's to our list. There's a lot of great uh, trails in here. Who lives on the south side? Who actually rode his bike all the way up into this area on uh, one weekend and then stayed with us? That's wonderful. Wonderful way to exercise and a wonderful way to get out and see a lot of things that you don't see from the car. Indeed. Well, great. Thanks so much, Amy. We appreciate your being the target speaker. Uh, Dean was telling me that you have been a target speaker now two or three, two or three times. times in the last couple of in weeks. Last so week. uh, obviously, one of the beauties of Toastmaster is the evaluation portion. I'm not that much of a glutton for punishment, but uh, it certainly is a great way of getting different people's perspectives on the ways uh, that we can improve our speaking. So thanks so much, Amy. Let's give Thank Amy you. a great time. <laughs> I've always uh, felt that the target speakers were quite brave going into it. I know that uh, many here have done that as well, and it's a great experience. How are we doing on the time? Almost. We're at uh, five minutes now, so we'll wait until the uh, first uh, evaluator is ready to be brought out. They probably have a few more seconds than we did as they were getting everybody settled in there. Bruce Burrow, who many of you know and who's a very experienced Toastmaster, said that one of the most difficult things about these speech contests is standing up here during those moments of silence. <laughs> <laughs> now I know exactly what it is to do. It's a great way to get comfortable with that as well. I want another skill of the Toastmaster. Can I interrupt you for a yes. Just briefly, there was a I don't know if you noticed, there was a fire alarm went up or burglar alarm went up upstairs, just so you know, I think it's off now, so. Okay, great. <laughs> we are ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you, uh, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. And after all contestants have spoken, the judges will give all the time they need uh, to the judges for them to complete the ballots. We will now begin the speech evaluation contest. John Pakel, evaluation contest number one. Evaluation contest number one, John 
Good evening, Toastmasters, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. What I'm going to do with this evaluation is very simply. First, I'm going to mention three strengths that I saw in this speech and why I feel they were strengths. Then I'm going to pick out three areas of improvement and give you suggestions on how maybe I would have improved it and that might be something that you could work with. Third, I'm going to tell you a personal specific thing that I'm going to do in my life based on what you talked about tonight. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do that. Let's begin with the strengths. First thing that I really like is you defined insurance. Two words, very simple, risk management. And that covers life insurance, health insurance, auto insurance, power of attorney, all of them. Two words, real simple, easy to remember. I like that. The story of telling your brother and his heart attack. My brother died a little over a year ago at the age of 48 of a heart attack. I can hardly tell the story of the surrounding six months prior to that without getting a little choked up. The fact that you were able to tell that story and not be choked up is really impressive. And it made your speech stronger because it brought home the point that insurance is important. I have a very tragic story on why it's important to me and you wanted to share that. I really liked that. The idea that the power of attorney is an important, the most important insurance, is you gave, the picture that I got out of it was kind of like an umbrella policy. Everything falls under the power of attorney. And that was another easy thing for me to uh, image. Now we're gonna go to raise some, uh, for improvement. The positioning of you in the speech. I like the fact you're out here you spent a lot more time talking over this side of the room than this side of the room. And when you were over here, I was over in this corner and your back was to the end. It was difficult to hear at times. Okay. Secondly, the introduction. I didn't really hear a clear introduction as far as what you were going to tell us. So it's kind of hard to follow that. And likewise, the third thing in the close, I didn't hear a summary of what you told us. So it was kind of there. Personally, what I'm going to do, I'm getting a power of attorney for myself. My daughter already has one because of her medical conditions. I'm her power of attorney. I need to do that for me. Thank you. Thank you. Evaluation contestant number two, Martina Matizen. Evaluation contestant number two, Martina Matizen. way and to present her ideas in a way that we can follow them in a logical manner so, so that we can connect with them. My goal 
is to evaluate her to see if what was in her heart came out of her mouth in an effective way, in a logical way for us. I felt that her strongest attribute was her voice in addition to her manner. I had confidence in you immediately. You have a very natural and comfortable and easy way of speaking, and I connected with that right away. A power of attorney is someone that I need to have confidence in, and I had confidence in you right away. In a position of authority, it would have been all right with me if you used the lectern, because that gives you even a little bit more of that authority. I found that when watching your movements, I had hoped to, that you would relax your arms and put your arms down a little bit, only because crouched arms tend to give us a sense that you're a little bit unsure of yourself, but I want to be very sure of you. I thought that you did a couple of really smart things. You talked about a legal matter, but yet had strong emotional element to it, and you talked about that, and you talked about the reality of trauma, but I wanted to know earlier, really, what is the power of attorney? More, oh, so glad that stopped beeping. <laughs> More specifically, I thought that your presentation over here to the side disconnected me just a little bit on that side. So how, in a serious presentation, how do you use the stage? I thought that what you were saying was very interesting and very important for all of us, would be even more effective with stories. I was begging for stories. When you got to the story about your brother, it was a little devastating. It was important and connected us with the reality of it, connected us with the importance of your issue, and I was hoping for more stories. And how would you use this in stories? Each area becomes part of it. This is where I'm an authority figure. Here's when I was in the hospital. This is what happened with my brother. And this is where I'm going to be when I want to tell you that this is an important part of your experience. I thought that Amy's presentation was strong in her authority, begging for some stories. And I thought her ending was very smart and very short. The best insurance is the power of attorney. I'll follow her lead and make my close as short and sweet, add power, and stories. Mr. Prentice. We have one minute of silence while the judges keep their points. <laughs> third contestant, Michelle Auk, evaluation contestant number three, evaluation contestant number three, Michelle Auk. things that I think you can do more of. 
I liked your story. I liked that you were able to tell your story and draw me in. It gave me some impression of why you were passionate about this subject matter. I think you can do more of that. <clears throat> I like the use of repetition, best ever. That kind of grabbed me. I wish you would have used it more through the speech because I was kind of waiting for that best ever again. I liked the use of your voice. You had very good inflection and you can do more of that. I liked how calm you were with your voice and how easily it flowed <clears throat> over the words. I like your use of transition words such as now. It just was a nice place to pause and say, now and move on to another part of the speech. Good transition words. I think you should do more of having your hands resting by your side, comfortable by your side. This is the way we stand. Which leads me to, uh, well, your other gestures that were good, we could do more of the counting on the fingers when you were listing the different insurances. But things that you might be able to do less of are the hands in front and rest more at the side. More of hands by side, less hands in front, hand clasping. And a little bit less of staying in one place. Take time to move around and access the whole area of your stage that you have here. Having said that, I hope that this evaluation was helpful to you, and I hope that all of the evaluations tonight are helpful to you in developing your, your speaking skills. Our fourth contestant, Linda Hennigenberg, evaluation contestant number four. Linda Hennigenberg, evaluation contest number four. Contestant number four. Thank you, Mr. Contest Chair, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters guests, and Amy. Amy, thank you for giving this topic. This is something that applies to everyone in this room. We all have insurance. We all need insurance. Right off the bat, you caught my ear, especially since my son and I have been dealing with insurance companies for nonstop for a week. I'm wanting to listen. But then you took it a step further. You talked about home, auto, health, life, so on down the line. Okay, we take those off, we know we need those. Then, you said, but I'm gonna talk about a different kind of insurance. Peace of mind insurance. And then you made me want to listen to you even more. You gave an informative speech, but you put a nice twist on it and applied it to my life. So right off the bat, I appreciate you choosing that topic and then coming up, qualifying yourself as someone who knows what she's talking about. You gave us the personal background as to why we should listen to you. Very important, especially in an informative speech. Very well done with that. Then you talked about the comparison, the legal versus the emotional insurance, and you've got that hook, the practical versus the emotional. 
you pulling us in. Nice job qualifying yourself, giving us the topic. Couple opportunities, mechanical, very simple. I love that you're very confident. When you got up here, I thought, that's a girl who knows what she's talking about. She's qualified to speak. So use your confidence. Get up here and command this entire speaking area. You have a tendency to want to pray. And this is fine once in a while, but it's okay to be confident. And I own the speaking area. My hands are okay here. They're okay up here. It's okay, just be yourself, be confident. The other thing I noticed is I love that you favored this side of the room because I was sitting here. However, <laughs> they would have liked it if you could have walked over here and maybe talked to Amy a little bit. She looks like a businesswoman, needs insurance information. Stopped in the middle and maybe made sure that Valerie was looking at you as well. So don't be afraid to use your speaking area, especially when we have one this wide, so your entire audience feels engaged. Finally, where you really drove it home with this speech is the choice of topic, and I want to reiterate that. When you give an informative speech especially, it's hard to find something that engages your entire audience. If I'm going to talk about skiing, you might lose half your audience or more. They're not going to want to listen. Insurance applies to everybody. It's a great topic choice for informative speech and then putting the twist on it, making it personal. Personal, why do I want to listen to you? And then a call to action. You told us what we should do and how we should do it. Nice job wrapping that up. You explain what you're going to talk about so I didn't have to guess. You qualified yourself. You gave lots of detail. Outstanding job. We all have it. We all need it. Now, would everyone please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have them collected by the ballot counters. <coughs> Judges are deliberating. Let us get to know our contestants. I'd like to ask each of the four contestants if they could please come back up to the lectern. I'd like to ask a few questions and we'd like to get to know you a little better. So come on up and line up on this side. Club, right? 
Toastmaster. Mr. Toastmaster, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if we have contestants who are appearing in the later contest, we should not be interviewing them now. Ah, gotcha. We have two uh, contestants who will be in the humorous speech contest, and that makes my job much easier because then I won't have to interview each of them twice and come up with uh, all of the interesting and exciting things about them. So, uh, John, we will continue with you. Uh, you talk about your interest being obviously speaking, copywriting, and, and general mayhem you put. I don't know if you remember this when you do that, but... I Standard part of living. Standard part of living, and uh, I, I think mayhem is, is uh, highly recommended for uh, keeping sanity in, uh, Absolutely. in this day and age. So, uh, and, and what type of copywriting do you do? It's uh, direct response advertising. Okay. And it's the real simple is that advertising is really salesmanship in print. And any ad that you write should have a call to action, whether it's a call to join a group. Toastmasters or buy a product, something like that. If your your advertising doesn't have that call to action, you've just thrown away money. And it's learning that craft of delivering that message in an effective way. Absolutely. And so do you do that for uh, AIU online? No, I do not at this time. I got you. Uh, I have, I just finished a project of four articles that I wrote for our company newsletter interviewing four different people who have had three to five promotions to teach other employees how they can get promoted from within. Great. And just submitted the last interview for our final review. Great. And we've had three come out. <laughs> they seem to be well received. I like them. <laughs> so, <laughs> as long as you and your boss like them, everything's yeah. good. There you go. And how long have you been with Toastmasters? Year and a half. Okay, roughly. I see you've earned your CC. Yes, I have. That time. So congratulations. Thank well, you. thanks so much for being a contestant this evening, and I appreciate your coming up and thank you interviewing with us. John. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, out. I know what club you're with. Yeah. Crystal Clear Toastmasters. And when does the Crystal Clear Club club meet? We meet Thursday morning, 7.30 in the morning. Early risers, come on out. Exactly. Yeah, come on over here. Thank you. Uh, let's see. You've been with Toastmasters how long? Well, this year I forgot my age. Um, <laughs> I've kind of forgotten how long I've been with Toastmasters. Okay, well that's, that's and forgivable. it hasn't been very long. So, how long have you been with Toastmasters? I've been with Toastmasters about two and a half years. That's how long I've been with okay. Toastmasters. Okay, <laughs> about the same time. Good deal. It says here your interests include a lot of outdoor activities. Uh, what are some of those and what were some of the, that you did this summer that you particularly enjoyed? Well, this summer was um, supposed to be a biking summer. So last summer was a running summer, and I did a half marathon with my husband, and this summer was supposed to be a biking summer. And it was to a large extent, but I didn't get to the century ride that I was hoping to. Um, I did a lot of kayaking, and um, we did some hiking. What else did we do? I don't know. Well, speaking of bikes, I have seen you on your motorcycle. Yes. <gasps> a different type of bike. What yes. type of motorcycle do you have? I have a Honda 750. It's purple. It is, and it's very nice. It's very nice. And uh, just real quickly, I think uh, the judges are about ready. Uh, tell the audience about the trip your son took with your dad this summer. Yes. Well, my son is 19 years old and graduated from high school in May. And after he graduated, my dad offered to take him on a motorcycle trip. So they went from our house here in Illinois all the way out west to Montana. They saw Glacier National Park, and then dropped down and saw Yellowstone, and then they came back over the Rockies, and all the way back home, 3,500 miles. Wow, oh. fantastic. He had a great time. Yeah, I know I would have when I was 19. That's <laughs> a fantastic yeah. thing. Thanks so much, Michelle. Thank you, Jim. time uh, prior to our 10-minute break 
I would like to introduce our Northwest Division Governor, Mr. John Labby. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. Well, I know that you're all anxious to get to food, so I'll talk just absolutely as quickly as I possibly can. <laughs> first things first, winners of tonight's contests will be competing against winners of the other five area contests in the Northwest Division, Saturday afternoon, September 29th. So that's about 10 days from now at Harper College in the same big room that we've used for about the last two years for division contests. It's room Z102. Contest begins at 3. We hope that you will all be there. It is going to be a fabulous contest. The, 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 the level of competition that I've been seeing coming out of all of our area contests just, it just like, keeps getting better every year. And, and I'm sure that you're, you're going to share my excitement when you, when you get there and you see the skill and the passion in, in the folks that will be competing that Saturday afternoon. Quick bit of business before we proceed to other interesting and exciting things. Just a quick reminder that club your, your dues renewals are due by September 30th, and that's coming up a lot faster than, than you might think. So if your club has, has not gotten its dues renewals together, this is the time to correct that little oversight. All right. Next thing up, our district conference will be, I know this is kind of small, and it's not even in color. Is it? Anyway, our, our district conference is coming. It's October 27th. It's an all-day Saturday event, beginning with Achievers Breakfast for anyone who has achieved an educational award since the last contest, which is roughly tax day in the spring. As you can see, our headliner is Craig Valentine, former world champion of public speaking. He will be speaking two or three times during the course of the day, including at that Achievers Breakfast. Still time to get that CC, by the way, uh, and get your free breakfast. But he'll also be doing the keynote speech in the early evening. At the district conference, of course, we also do district finals for both the humorous and evaluation, speech evaluation contest. So that is not to be missed. And finally, I want to bring to your attention a very new program. So new it's hot off my printer. I literally just received, this is a Joe Biden thing, literally. Anyway, just received <laughs> this announcement today. There's a new program in being put into place to encourage clubs to cooperate for the mutual improvement of both clubs. <coughs> We're looking for strong clubs to partner up with clubs that might be struggling. Some clubs have a little trouble these days with keeping up their membership or keeping up attendance. And we know that there are strong clubs in the district that would be willing and are capable of offering the club-to-club -club guidance and support that those struggling clubs could use. And I will tell you, that the origin of this idea comes from this area. This has been a wildly successful area over the last several years, in large part because of that level of cooperation and syn synergy from one club to the next. So that idea is being spread out to the entire district in an organized fashion. Clubs that participate will be rewarded for doing so. Club presidents and officers, there are about 15 or 20 copies of the flyer on the signing table. So if you would, please grab one before you leave this evening and consider taking the opportunity to work with one of your fellow clubs. And on that note, I will introduce to you the food table. Oh, yeah. 10 wait, minutes. Wait, wait, wait. It's there, it, there are additional restrooms there. Ah. All right, if, if anyone has, should happen to. So just about 8 o'clock. About 8 o'clock. Great.